Mr. Demartini and Mr. Casey to start us off mm -hmm. on our two-year financial plan. There you are. Welcome. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Mayor. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Keith Demartini, and I'm the City's Finance Director. And it is my pleasure um, today to present a very high-level overview of the, of the City Administrator's recommended uh, fiscal year 2022 and 2023 budget um, for the City of Santa Barbara. Next slide, please. The agenda for today's presentation is to uh, provide a very high-level overview of the proposed budget. Uh, including the major work efforts uh, that are included uh, as priorities in the budget. I'll provide a general fund uh, recap and an outlook as to what's been included in uh, the proposed budget for the two fiscal years. I'll also provide a very high level overview about what the city council can expect to hear uh, in the coming months in regards to the enterprise funds and the internal service funds. I'll, I will also provide a detailed um, listing of all of the budget review calendar items. Uh, when the, the public can anticipate hearing about budget related items at both the finance committee and also at the Greater City Council. And then staff would be, would be more than happy to take your questions and, and hear a discussion. Next slide, please. The city uh, has posted the proposed budget on the city's website. So members of the public can access the very detailed uh, budget book at www.santabarbaraca.gov backslash budget. The document has been posted as of two o'clock this afternoon and it is available for public access. Next slide, please. So now I just wanna give a very high level overview of the budget and talk about uh, some of the major work efforts next. Next slide, please. The, the preparation of and the timeline that, that, dictates, that dictates when the city issues its budget is, is documented in the city's charter. It, uh, the city's charter does say that the budget must be submitted no later than 60 days prior to July 1st, July 1st being the first day of each fiscal year. And so that date falls uh, on today, which gives uh, around 60 days, a little bit more on this fiscal year, uh, where the city council will be able to hear presentations from staff about what is included in the proposed budget, and then give you an opportunity to deliberate uh, and provide your final recommendations. The first, this is the first year of this budget cycle. Um, council may recall that the city prepares a, uh, a two-year financial plan. Uh, this first year's financial, this first year, the fiscal year 2022, is the first year of the financial plan, where it's the operating budget and the capital budget for fiscal year 22. Next slide, please. The budget document that you received today is a very long, extensive document. There is a great deal of information in there that staff believe is important and vital for the city council to receive and to review and to ask questions of and discuss with staff uh, to make the best decision possible about the use of our financial resources. You'll, you'll find that there is an overview budget message uh, at the very beginning of the budget book from the city administrator, which outlines many of the major assumptions uh, and priorities in the proposed budget, as well as some of the major work efforts that have been included and funded in, in that budget as well. You will see a number of summary schedules in regards to our revenues and expenditures, positions, capital projects, um, other projects as well. And there will be a two-year plan document for each department. There's a, each department has a section in the budget book um, detailing all of the specific priorities and financial considerations for each department by which they will operate. All that information you'll be able to find in the budget book itself. Next slide, please. May come as no surprise in conversations we've been having with you as of late during our financial um, quarterly projections um, and other presentations, the city is still, um, is still encountering impacts, uh, economic impacts related to COVID-19. There continues to be a great deal of economic uncertainty in regards to the city's revenue sources in our budget that directly impacts our ability to, to continue to deliver, to deliver services. Since COVID began just a little over a year ago, the city is projected to realize approximately $35 million less revenue by the end of the current fiscal year. It's a significant revenue loss across all of the city's funds. In order to balance the budget, uh, over the past couple of years, 
to, to sort of account for that revenue, to account for that impact. The city has needed to reduce our expenditures and has also needed to dip in to the general fund reserves in order to balance the budget, both in the current fiscal year and what is being projected in next fiscal year. The city has been able to uh, replenish those reserves over the past 10 years following the Great Recession. And it's, it's a really good thing that the city has prioritized uh, at the city council's direction, replenishing those reserves because those reserves were used and are planned to continue to be used in the current fiscal year and next fiscal year in order to balance. The contingency reserve um, is projected to largely be depleted by the end of fiscal year 21. In fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23, there is still, it is still projected this time to dip into those reserves uh, at, at a very modest level. It's important to note here that, uh, that the recently approved American uh, Rescue Plan Act that was signed by President Biden last month will offer some relief to the city of Santa Barbara. Uh, in that $1.9 trillion relief package, there is just over $22 million that is being allocated to the city of Santa Barbara and uh, that will be over the course of a year. So in about around $11 million of that will be received next month in, in May of 2021. And next week, staff will be bringing an item to the Finance Committee um, to, under, to receive a presentation uh, in regards to the overview of that uh, relief package and uh, to hear staff's recommendation about how those funds um, can be used and, and receive direction. And that will come to the City Council at a later time. But though that relief package is meant to offset the significant loss of revenue that the city has already lost. And the amount of money that the city will be getting in that relief package is far less than the total of the $35 million that the city is projected to lose. Next slide, please. This slide here summarizes by fund and by revenue source, the, the lost revenue that staff is projecting from when COVID began um, to the end of the current fiscal year. And as you can see, uh, in total, it's approximately $35 million. The revenue sources that the city has felt the most significant impact is in the general fund in both transient occupancy tax and sales tax. Again, which comes as no surprise. Uh, those, uh, the retail industry and the, ho the hotel industry has been hit very, very hard and significantly with the various state home orders and the reduced economic activity um, in the greater Santa Barbara area. So those revenue sources have seen significant decline in revenue. You'll see our departmental revenues as well. Uh, the city has either had to cancel or delay many of the programs offered in both uh, recreation and parks and many other departments. Um, downtown parking had a significant loss of revenue as well from a, a significantly less um, volume of parking activity going on in our city's parking lots. And then the waterfront as well, um, with, uh, with pressure on lease payments and parking revenue um, as well. Next slide, please. The, the recommended budget also articulates, particularly in the budget message itself, many of the major work efforts that even though there are limited resources, the city administrator's recommended budget includes funding for, for many critical um, projects that the city council has articulated to us um, over the past few, a few months that they want funded in, in the proposed budget. And this list here just includes a, a very short uh, um, list of some of those priority projects. It includes restoring economic vitality citywide following um, sort of the impacts of, of post COVID and how the city continues to support our retail and other economic activities citywide. It will be prioritizing funding for the new police station uh, the Finance Committee just heard a presentation in regards to uh, the rate setting for the Community Choice Energy Program, um, which is scheduled to go live um, at the early part of fiscal year 2022. The, conti the city continues to program its Measure C capital project funding uh, to prioritize the, um, the investment uh, and, and maintenance of many of the city's critical capital infrastructure um, facilities. There's all, there will also be funding for a, a state street master planning process that has just recently begun. And then also funding for the De La Guerra Plaza uh, project is to revitalize that area. And then also construction is scheduled to begin in the library plaza in the next number of months. And there are many, many more priority projects and initiatives 
that staff are very excited to talk to the city council about uh, in the coming months during many of the budget presentations um, that will be coming. Next slide, please. So now I'd just like to give a, a few slides of a high level overview of the major considerations and trends in the general fund. Next slide, please. This slide here provides a high level overview of the multi-year forecast process that staff produced in conjunction with this budget. Council may recall that we held a very detailed um, work session with you back in February, where we spent a great deal of time talking about the general fund revenue sources and expenditures and our forecast assumptions. This model has continued to be updated throughout um, the past number of months as we developed our budget. It shows in the gray bars what the projected ending fund balance is, is projected to be in the general fund over the course of the next few years. The red bar shows our expenditures and the green dotted line shows our revenues. As you can see over the past two years and being projected in the next two fiscal years and beyond, the expenditures are greater than our revenues. So we continue to grapple with a structural budget deficit requiring the, the use uh, of a minimal use of reserves and continuing to control our expenditures in order to balance the budget. So we continue to have some challenges ahead, but staff will, will be presenting ways in which we've, budget, we've uh, balanced the budget. I'll provide an overview of that today and we'll go into that in a great level of detail over the coming months. Next slide, please. This slide shows a high level overview in the general fund of our revenues being projected in, both in the current fiscal year and the prior two fiscal years and in the budget years and the expenditures and what the projected deficit um, is, is projected to be in that time frame. During the quarter two financial projection report, uh, which was recently updated back in February, we indicated to the city council that the, the most current projection for the deficit in this current fiscal year is approximately $7 million, which effectively will reduce our contingency reserves down to close to nothing, really only leaving disaster reserves. In the next fiscal year's budget, fiscal year 22, we are uh, balancing the budget by controlling expenditures um, significantly, um, but also um, requiring a very minimal and modest use of reserves which really is a, is a positive sign looking at the budget in totality um, because staff continues to control expenditures to the best of our ability, holding positions vacant and such, um, and continuing to look very closely at our revenue sources to be very realistic about what we can expect to achieve. And all at the same time, um, not having to lay off staff and continuing to work with our bargaining units. Um, so the, the, the strategic leveraging of a very minimal amount of reserves is being projected and proposed here, um, which is a sign of, of us getting out of this post COVID um, uncertainty that we're in moving in the right direction. Next slide, please. This is a very high level outlook of our general fund, both on the revenues and the expenditure side. As I mentioned earlier, sales tax and transient occupancy tax tax took the most significant hit during COVID. Uh, TOT is likely to rebound quicker um, than a sales tax will. Um, staff believes in working um, in, in taking in um, a lot of great uh, economic forecasting information that the, that the hotel industry is likely to rebound fairly quickly uh, due to a lot of pent up demand for travel, particularly for those uh, folks that don't feel comfortable yet for flying. Uh, driving to a, a close location like Santa Barbara is very appealing. Uh, so staff has built that into our TOT revenue projection. Sales tax, on the other hand, will recover. Uh, the, all signs point to that, but it will be a much slower, steady recovery over the course of a few fiscal years. Again, many uh, businesses continue to be hit hard from COVID, and so they will take some time to recover. Staff have, been, have included a full expenditure projection in the proposed budget. Uh, again, a majority of the city's expenditures uh, pay for staff, both the salaries and fringe benefits, including pension costs, uh, which continue to rise during the forecast period, uh, during the budget period, and also non-salary expenses like contracts and supplies and materials and construction um, costs. Those, those costs continue to increase as well. So we continue to have our pressures on the expenditure side. Next slide, please. This slide here provides a very high level um, overview of the major revenue sources in the general fund. 
uh, and the pie chart shows you the proportional share of those major uh, of those major sources. Again, the most uh, the the largest uh, sources of revenue in the city's general fund continue to be sales tax. Both are our, our, our normal Bradley Burns uh, sales tax at one percent. Uh, in fiscal year 22, that's coming in at 22.6 million dollars. But then also our Measure C district sales tax, uh, that's just over 23 million dollars. Property tax continues to grow very steadily and has not been significantly impacted. Um, due to COVID. So growth is still um, anticipated in property tax uh, at, at over $42 million. And then you can see some of the other uh, major revenue sources in the general fund here as well. Next slide, please. This slide summarizes the major categories of expenditures in the city's general fund. Again, as it comes to no surprise, the majority of the city's expenditures um, pay for staff, pays for the staff that deliver services to the community. Uh, just around 68% of the total general fund budget. And you can see some of the smaller areas that are funded um, through the general fund, supplies and services. Um, capital is a significant uh, piece of the pie and that's primarily funding directly from the Measure C district sales tax. It is, is solely dedicated to capital um, and maintenance and improvements and investment in our capital infrastructure um, citywide. Next slide, please. I mentioned earlier that due to the, the projected structural deficit um, that staff has been projecting in the multi-year forecast, uh, similar to um, a significant portion of the, of the solution to solving um, the current fiscal year budget um, problem, um, staff are projecting to uh, implement a number of departmental budget reductions in the current fiscal year, I'm sorry, in next fiscal year, fiscal year 2022. The total expenditure reductions at the, in, in all departments in the general fund totals around $6.3 million. It's a significant uh, uh, reduction to the, the total citywide um, general fund budget. There are multiple ways in which departments are proposing to achieve savings, and that will be uh, presented to the city council during many of the budget presentations in the coming weeks. Uh, but a, a very significant portion of that savings is coming from holding positions vacant. That's a similar strategy that was implemented in the current fiscal year. In total, there are 26 positions across many departments uh, that, are, that are planned to be held vacant in order to achieve salary savings. Uh, as far as labor concessions, what's, what's included in the fiscal year 22 uh, proposed budget is only uh, any approved uh, cost of living adjustments for the city's bargaining units have been included. There are no additional um, labor cost of living adjustments that have been incorporated into the recommended budget. And then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in order to balance the budget at the end of the day in fiscal year 22 and 23, it does require a very minimal um, but strategic use of reserves that we continue to have available in order to see us through this economic um, difficult time. Next slide, please. This slide here provides a very high level overview of the general fund capital priorities. Again, the majority of the city's um, general fund capital is funded through uh, the Measure C district sales tax. Uh, again, just over $23.7 million. Um, the pie chart on the right shows you where that $23.7 million is proposed to be allocated in fiscal year 22. Um, um, as in prior years, a vast majority of that continues to go towards maintaining the city's street infrastructure. Uh, and But it, as you can see, it crosses multiple levels and multiple disciplines um, for funding allocations. The general fund does uh, contribute around $800,000, is, is projected to do so in fiscal year 22. And there are a few projects uh, supporting the fire department and the library with some system uh, improvements, as well as the East Side Neighborhood Park and some phone and voicemail upgrade projects that will in, that will um, benefit citywide um, department staff. Next slide, please. This slide here uh, shows you after we've taken into consideration all of the um, all of the revenue sources and the expenditures that are being projected in the next two fiscal years what impact that will have on the city's general fund reserves. And so the, the red line here shows you what the policy target should be um, based on city council resolution that was adopted um, requiring that 
that 10% of the annual operating expenditures go are, are dedicated towards contingency reserves and 15% of annual operating expenditures are dedicated to disaster reserves totaling 25%. That's what that red line represents. And as you can see, the years following the Great Recession, uh, where we had to dip into our reserves to balance the budget, the city council had prioritized steadily replenishing those reserves over the course of seven years and was able to actually meet the reserve policy the past few years prior to COVID hitting. But as you can see, that, that policy line continues to grow as our expenditures grow, but our reserve balance has been declining um, because of our need to dip into them. And that gap is fairly wide. It was wider than, than what the city experienced um, during the Great Recession. Again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, President Biden's uh, rescue package that was recently um, put into law uh, and, the, and, the, and the relief money, the rescue money that the city will be receiving to recover some of its revenue loss will surely help um, with our reserve position. And again, that will be a conversation staff will have starting with the Finance Committee next week and then eventually with the City Council. Um, during our budget conversations with you. Next slide, please. So next I'll just provide a very high level, a high level overview of what to expect uh, in regards to the city's enterprise and internal service funds. Next slide, please. The list on the left provides just a list of all the enterprise funds that the city has. Again, we went over this in a little bit of high level uh, detail during the work session we had back in February. The list on the right provides a, a list of the internal service funds that the city has as well. And similar to the general fund, staff will present very high level um, assumptions and forecasts for both revenues and expenditures, what implications that might have on the reserves in all of those funds, many of the capital improvement uh, program and pri programs and priorities, any fee changes that there may be, um, staff will present any impacts in regards to COVID that some of these enterprise funds might be experiencing, particularly the waterfront and downtown parking. And then also any priority projects um, or um, in budget reductions that they are, are that they have incorporated into their budget proposals. So over the course of the next two months, staff will be presenting this information to you at various times and we'll welcome your feedback. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to provide a listing of all of the dates that staff will be presenting budget information to both the Finance Committee and the City Council. Next slide, please. So earlier today, staff just uh, made a very high level presentation um, announcing that the budget was being adopted and gather any feedback. That meeting has already occurred. Today we are with you uh, this afternoon to provide a very high level overview of, of the proposed budget for fiscal year 22 and 23. The items denoted in red are presentations that staff will be making to the Finance Committee um, beginning at 12 o'clock. They took an action today to have their meeting start at 12 o'clock to ensure that there's ample time um, for public discussion. We will begin uh, departmental budget presentations with the City Council starting on May 3rd, beginning with the library and the airport. Next slide, please. Budget sessions will continue with the City Council on May 5th, 7th, and 10th. And you can see the departments that will be delivering presentations to you at that time. Next slide, please. And then again on May 19th, 20th, and 26th. Again, you can see that there are a number of departments that will be prepared to present their budget uh, proposals to you as well and, and gain your feedback. Next slide, please. And then finally on June 9th, um, in the evening, the Finance Committee's budget recommendations will be uh, delivered to the City Council, and then City Council can begin their deliberations on the recommended budget, and then make uh, provide your final direction to staff to move forward. On June 15th, there'll be a Proposition 218 hearing on the proposed fee changes, and then uh, the schedule is to have the City Council adopt the budget on June 22nd. Next slide, please. The the recommendation uh, before you this afternoon is to receive the recommended two-year financial plan for fiscal years 2022 and 2023, including the recommended operating and capital budget for fiscal year 2022. And also hear a report from staff in connection with the filing of the recommended two-year financial plan and approve of the proposed schedule of city council budget review meetings and public hearings. And that concludes my presentation. I just want to say that I want to thank the dozens and dozens of staff that have been involved in the budget process over the past many months 
I've spent countless hours and I've done a, a great deal of analysis in another very challenging budget year um, for the city. And I have a lot of respect and admiration for the staff that have been involved. So thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And I'll add that you did all this budget work under the stress of pandemic, Mr. Demartini. So I'm grateful to all the staff too, but come back because I think Mr. Friedman has a question for you. I, I have one too, but go ahead, Mr. Friedman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Demartini and Madam Mayor and our entire staff. Uh, this is a very uh, stressful time of year. There's a lot going on with the pandemic. I just have one question because I'm going to have a lot of questions over the coming weeks for you. So don't need to put them all out there now, but um, what is the total budget of the entire organization we have in this? It's 168 million approximately for general fund, but just um, overall, what is the, the total? I think believe last year was 292 million or something like that. But just so the public knows when you factor in all the enterprise funds, and that's the only question I have. And if we don't have it now, we can get it later. So. Like a quiz. No, no problem, I know. <laughs> It's just over $300 million citywide. I'm going to that. There's a summary schedule on the front page, which I'm trying to find, but it's just over $300 million citywide for fiscal year 2022. Perfect. And thank you. That's that's it. I just wanted to get a breadth of everything we do because we focus a lot on the general fund up here, but we do so much more than just the general fund. So thank you, Mr. Martini. <laughs> um, my question would be on slide 14. Whenever it says other, I'm like, what's in there? So it was other revenue and it looked like a biggish number, uh, Ms. Hamilton or Mr. Hamilton. Other revenues at 45.4, uh, is that the utility users tax and some of those other tax revenues, Mr. DiMartino? Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you for asking that question. I also question the other line items and tables as well. So yes, that line is primarily made up of some of the um, it's actually not the other taxes. The user utility tax line item is in that other taxes line, the $12.6 million number in fiscal year 2022. The other revenues number is primarily made up of uh, the largest piece is departmental revenues. So um, departments like um, parks and recreation and police where they generate their own revenue for various programs that they may offer. That's where that revenue is recorded. Um, other other revenue lines in that item include investment income. So on the on the income that we that we uh, realize from the investments that the city makes, it's recorded in that grouping as well. Um, and there are a number of other um, sort of smaller um, one-off revenue sources that are also included in that grouping as well. Right. And then just to let the public know, the city makes very very conservative investments. They um, by law we can't really. Um, do anything too radical with our money, with your money. So I don't see any other questions. Let's ask our clerk if um, people are raising their hands in the go to webinar uh, audience. Mr. Uh, Stout. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. We presently have two uh, commenters for this item, Anna Marie Gott and Lee oh. Heller. And Anna Marie, uh, you have been unmuted and you may begin your comment. Thank you. Good afternoon, City Council. So in the last uh, discussion that we had earlier regarding safety, uh, a lot was said about, you know, funding and reprioritizing where money goes. Um, I'd like to give you some ideas about how to collect some funding. Do you know that there are a lot of fees that are uncollected um, and that's associated with projects that have gone, um, you know, partially through the system? Why aren't we collecting those fees? I recently looked at a project and fees from 2019 were still uncollected and it was flagged in a cella, but obviously, you know, no one has done anything to collect the fees. So I'm asking why, because that can help your bottom line. Uh, did you know that staff actually um, gives ministerial approval and they're supposed to be collecting fees and sometimes they do not collect the fees and they don't actually collect the documents such as design files so we can even see what what was approved transfer of ownership for that cannabis uh, permit that you guys uh you know just heard about 
Well, did you know that I sent an email to Matt for, I think there actually is a problem because they expanded uh, their, uh, their footprint and they don't seem to have, you know, this updated uh, um, parking that they actually won the contract with. So I'm not sure that they actually should still have that permit. And did you know you can revoke it? Um, why don't we have a transfer of ownership ordinance for cannabis? Did you just see that, that what was it called, glass door or glass house down in Carpinteria just sold for $500 million? You cannot tell me that some of these cannabis uh, permits are not going to be sold or people aren't going to merge with and have an IPO. The city should be profiting. Every time a parking requirement is not met and we go ahead and we allow someone to reduce their parking requirement, we don't collect fees, except for a tiny fee, but not a long-term fee that is commensurate with the actual parking uh, space, which is tens of thousands of dollars that we could actually be, kept, be keeping and using for another purpose. What about all of the illegal short-term vacation rentals that could be used for housing and all of the taxes that we have not actually collected? We don't have anybody really focusing on this. And what we do have is glacial, glacial change and glacial. Thanks, actually, that's the, those are good suggestions. Let's, let's collect on fees or other areas if we're not, if we're not finding some money, so thanks. Um, another speaker? Mr. Stahl? I'm sorry, Madam Mayor. Uh, presently, there are no other speakers uh, indicated for this item. Okay, we'll close public comment, and it looks like we need to receive this. We've heard our... Um, We've heard our report and then we approve the schedule. Uh, Mr. Friedman, comments or a, a motion? Can't hear you. Sorry about that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just real quickly, again, want to want to thank all the staff and all the departments for putting together this budget under the challenges of, of COVID and for doing the extra work. We're having to hold a lot of positions vacant as we've seen. And so uh, we're going to have a lot of questions from council from finance over the coming uh, month. And I look forward to having those discussions on our, our budget priorities. And so with that, I'll, I'll, I'll move the staff recommendation. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and second it and add thanks to the finance committee, which um, this is your busiest time of year. And so thanks for all the uh, work, thanks in advance for all the work you're going to be doing. So. Um, well, we'll take a, a roll call vote then on this uh, motion to uh, move our to move our budget process forward. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is a motion by Council Member Friedman, seconded by Council Member, pardon me, seconded by Mayor Murillo for the staff recommendation. Council Member Sneddon. Yes. Council Member Friedman. Yes. Council Member Jordan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Oscar Gutierrez. Aye. Council Member Alejandro Gutierrez. Yes. Council Member Harmon. Yes. Mayor Maria. Aye. That was unanimous. Thank you to Mr. Demartini and all the budget staff and all the department heads and all the uh, business managers and everyone who put this together. And it's not entirely good news on the budget, but thank goodness that we had a reserve and we were able to uh, use those um, emergency funds, exactly what they were set aside for. Mr. Casey, much thanks to you and your, and your staff, sir. Closing that item, we move